Hello, after finishing the DC behavior of this simple diode circuit, let us understand how the circuit behaves if we want to understand the transient or time response of this circuit. So instead of a DC voltage source, we want to use a time domain analysis. And for that, we are going to use a time uh, domain source. So right click this. You see that DC voltage source already defined. So click, we click advanced and there are so many independent sources that we have seen and we can represent that. So here with a DC value, we have given that. Uh, we have made this information visible on the schematic. It's a one volt. You see the one volt is displaying here. So do we want pulse? So we can click there and we select that. Uh, we want sine wave. So we can select that and put the properties here. And uh, if we want exponential source, we choose that and so on. So for example, we choose a sine wave. Uh, we'll see that uh, the how to input the parameters. Uh, this part is for the AC response or small signal AC analysis. If we want to do, we'll see that if we go for AC analysis. So see uh, the DC offset voltage. So it says that there is a uh, sine voltage, sinusoidal voltage source, and does it have uh, any DC voltage uh, for the for the signal? Uh, if it is there, so it will uh, your signal will override or superimpose on that DC offset voltage. If not, we'll just write zero or we we'll leave it blank. Then amplitude, let's say I want to apply one volt of signal, which is a sinusoidal. Remember now this is a time varying signal we are applying. And it has a frequency of about, let's say 100 or 1000 hertz. Uh, delay time, does it have, does the signal have any delay? You can choose, otherwise keep it zero or blank, leave the place blank. And does it have uh, theta? which is one over S, uh, the reciprocal of the delay, no, or leave it blank. Uh, does it have any phase? Uh, we'll assume that it has a zero phase shift, uh, not the phase shift, but the phase, uh, how many cycles you want. So if we want, let's say uh, 100 cycles, we take it and we click OK. And this information is visible on the screen. So we just try to uh, drag, use the drag option, select it and place it somewhere here. And again, press the space bar on the keyboard so that your uh, circuit remains in the center of the screen. Well, now you have done that. Uh, right click the diode model. We, do we want to pick up a new diode from the manufacturer or want to keep it a general diode model? We keep it general. Close this. Resistor is of one kilo ohm. So we keep it the same. Or you see, right click. You can also select the part number by uh, click, clicking the select register option, and this window opens up. And you can choose the resistors from the manufacturer list itself. You see, there are different values. So we have explained that in the previous model. So when we actually will de design the real hardware, you actually select the parts. Uh, for accuracy, precision, and other requirements of your hardware. So right click this, uh, you see that tolerance is 1% or 0 0.1 0 .1 power rating has been done. We don't want this specific part of a manufacturer. So what I'll do is I'll use the cut option, cut the component, press escape from the keyboard, go to library, and type register, R-E-S. So Register is there, and I'm using just a normal register. So right click it. I don't have any values for tolerance and power rating C. Only when I do the select register, I will have this option. So now resistance value I have to give, let's say 1K, right? And I can define the tolerance and power rating if I want, otherwise I leave it blank. So click OK, that's it. Now, do we need the dot op analysis? We don't need that. So right click because we are analyzing the risk behavior of a circuit with respect to time. So which analysis out of this so many analysis 
uh, we have chosen BC operating point as in the previous models, but now we want transient simulation. So we click transient and we are going to perform a non-linear time domain simulation. We'll dig into details uh, about that as we progress. So we assume that all components uh, and uh, devices behave in a linear mode currently. Now, stop time. How long you want to run your simulation for? So we remember the frequency of a sine wave is about 1000 hertz, uh, 1 kilohertz. So time period of this waveform is about 1 millisecond. Okay, so let's say we want to run it about 100 millisecond. Uh, since when you want uh, to start saving your data, so zero seconds. And what is the maximum time state? It starts from zero seconds. And after what time state at each time step, you want to plot your data. So let's say uh, 10 milliseconds. Uh, here is the option start external DC supply voltage at zero volt. Do you want that? No, we want that one volt because uh, that is what uh, we, we don't have any DC power supply here. Stop simulating if the steady state is detected. So we also leave it blank. Now step the load current source. We don't have that. Skip the initial operating point solution. No, we don't want to skip it. We want it to done. So look, once you input these parameters, this command, the spice command syntax is here. So it says that it starts with dot three R A N. So when you write the netlist by hand, you need to write this syntax uh, for this analysis. But the schematic editor lets you do that. Uh, by putting the parameters here. So understand this dot TRAN, it's in the transient uh, analysis, starts with the zero seconds. Uh, it goes up to 100 milliseconds. It has a, no, not, not really. Let, let's read the syntax here. Dot TRAN, it's right here. Then the T print, it starts printing the data from zero seconds. T stop is 100 millisecond, it will start the simulation, stop the simulation. Then in the parenthesis, uh, the start time is zero seconds and the maximum states we have chosen is about 10 milliseconds. So that's all. And rest other options can be given uh, like that. Click OK. And you see now this command has uh, the syntax for the analysis is there. So let's write, try to run this simulation and see if it, uh, what kind of results it shows. So basically, uh, when there is a positive one volt, uh, positive cycle of one volt, the diode should get forward bias uh, and the current flows through the diode and the circuit is complete. For the negative one volt on the negative half cycle, the diode should be reverse bias. It means it is acting as an open switch. No current flows through the circuit and output voltage should be zero. So let us try to see that. So we go, but before that, click view, click spice netlist and see what spice netlist it generates. So you see now a very interesting fact. So because I am, remember, I am uh, going to upload the executable spice files. These uh, circuit files uh, are going to be uploaded. So it means when you open them, you simply ready-madely get this circuit there and then you just do what I'm doing here. Click view, click spice netlist. You will have a ready-made spice netlist which you can save as a .cir extension or .sp extension or .net extension anywhere using my Word document or any text editor as shown over here and open the simulation software, call this file and run it, boom, you get the results. So either use a circuit schematic or use the just textual uh, net, net list uh, to run your simulation. So you see here V in is connected between uh, V1. This is the voltage source is connected between node V in and zero. V in and zero right here. Ground is always zero. Remember, we have seen that in the previous model. 
it is a sine wave source. So we define, the netlist defines it's a sine wave. And these are the parameters that we have inputted. Zero, one. Zero is what? DC offset. One is amplitude. Thousand is frequency, thousand hertz. Delay time, theta, phi, phase is zero and 100 cycles. So we want 100 cycles of this wave. Then diode D2 is connected between net V in and V out and then is D. R1 is connected between V out and zero ground right here and it has a value of 1K. And the, since we have used the diode model, a generic model, so this command goes there, dot model D, D. Which analysis we are doing? Transient. So I have explained this syntax. Dot tran zero is the print time, 100 milliseconds. It has to run up to 100 milliseconds. It has to stop there. Starts from zero and maximum step. After zero, it starts from zero second and at 10 millisecond steps, it will start printing the data. Back annotation is that print the values and dot end to end the spice like this. So you see now this is done. We click the simulation and we'll see the waveform window has opened up. So what we can do now, when we take the cursor on the schematic, automatically the probe arrow gets highlighted. So we can actually plot input and output. So you see input, I want to plot input, I click here. So I have got one volt, zero volt here and one volt peak and minus one volt in the negative cycle. So you see now I have about 100 cycles uh, in this time period on the x-axis, zero millisecond, 100 milliseconds, and it is two volt peak to peak signal, input signal I have. I can zoom in this section, particular section. So right here, I can see that waveform is there. Now let's see what is the output. So remember, I come back, I click the schematic again, and I see that I have this register output. So I click here and look at this, the behavior. Now, this is the output voltage, basically. So what is the output voltage? It follows the input to some level about 0.37. Let's zoom in more. It follows is up to 0 0.37 volt in the positive half cycle. And in the negative half cycle, it down, this output signal is clicked. It doesn't appear in the output is zero. You see this zero. Again, in the next positive half cycle, the output reaches about 0 0.37 volt and the negative half cycle is click, clipped. So you just try to see that. Uh, I right clicked it and I click the auto range Y axis so that the whole waveform appears pretty clean to me. And I am analyzing the behavior. So, so can anybody tell me that why output is reaching to 0 0.37 volt only in the positive half cycle and in the negative half cycle, it's completely zero. So answer is in the previous slides. Uh, we can see that uh, in the positive half cycle, in the previous module, you see the DC behavior of the, um, of the diode in the previous module. Uh, we've seen that when in the positive, during the positive half cycle, this diode is forward bias and the current flows through the circuit acts as a closed switch and the output will be V in, which is one volt minus the drop across the diode, which is 0 0.63 volt. We have seen the diode drop, okay? If you want to see what is the diode cutting voltage of this diode, just right click on the schematic window, go to view and click spice error log, control L on the keyboard otherwise. So when you click that, this shows you this dot op point found by inspection. So operating the simulator found the operating points quickly just by inspection. The simulator did that itself. And it is uh, just showing us some results. Uh, it actually calculated, computed the results in 0 0.2 seconds. Uh, the no, uh, temperature, operating temperature is about room temperature. It used some methods. So we don't have much information right here. So 
is basically uh, you have to run the DC operating point analysis for that. Can we do that? We'll see that if we can do that. Let us right click here and um, we can click the edit simulation card. And if you click here, dot to click, no, no, we don't do that. We just uh, take a look. So remember in the previous model, we have seen how to compute the, how to automatically uh, using the simulator, know the value of the cutting voltage. So it is, remember it is 0 0.67. And that's why your output is saturated to 0 0.3 volt right here. Okay, so it's a, a clipped voltage. In the negative half cycle, diode is reverse bias, acts as open switch, no current flows, and that's how we get zero output. So this cycle continues, uh, continues towards the 100 cycles. So if you zoom to fit, so all 100 cycles will appear here. And if you zoom in particular section, just press the left button of the mouse and keep zooming over the portion you want. Keep zooming over the portion you want. You can have it. Again, right click this window, auto range Y axis, and you see this is the behavior in that. So that's all about the transient analysis. What if we click the schematic window again through the left mouse button, and now we see we have probed the voltages, V in input and V out here. So you see V in is here in the green. V out is in the blue. What about I want to plot the current through the diode? So if I go to schematic, you see the probe gets highlighted. If I want to plot the current through the R register R1, you see the probe gets highlighted. So it's automatic. The simulator is doing that. So how to do that? So the, essentially the current through diode and the register are going to be same. So let's try to plot it. Shall I? I can choose to plot this current in the same window. In that case, the left y-axis is the voltage, but if I choose to plot the current in the same window of waveform, the right y-axis over here will be created. Let's see. ID2 got plotted and you see the average current flowing through the positive half cycle. Negative half cycle is of course zero microampere and the current peak value of the current is about 36 370 milli uh, microampere exactly same what we have calculated in theory refer to the powerpoint in the previous session please so that's it so you see now uh, again i will say always you should do theory calculation first of your small circuits then only you will be able to understand the simulated results. Otherwise, it's all going to be not useful. Okay. Uh, so how you can understand this is very simple. You see here, the currents is there. What if I right click, I will add the, I will click the add flat plot pane. So I will choose another waveform window. Click that window, right click again, add, click add trace. Which trace I want to plot? I want to plot current through register R1, which is essentially the current through the circuit. I click OK. See, this current is again 370 microampere in the positive half cycle, the peak value, and the negative half cycle is zero. All right, so this, that was all about, so it is acting as a half wave rectifier. The circuit acts as a half wave rectifier or AC to DC converter. Remember, the circuit acts as half wave rectifier or it's called as AC to DC converter. Half wave rectifier or AC to DC converter. Okay, so why? So because during the positive half cycle, diode is closed and the current that flows through the circuit is this one. And we have seen how to apply the 
KVL, which is V1 minus VD minus I times R1 is equal to zero. This is the KVL in the loop. And VD can be calculated from that. Then I can be calculated. We have seen that in the previous model, refer to the power point. So that was all about this uh, transient domain behavior.